Hi, Pisces, Sun, Moon, or Rising Sign. Thanks so much for joining in. And today I thought I would do a specific reading for the Mercury retrograde. And Mercury goes into retrograde on uh, April 9th and will stay there until May 3rd. And so we can look at the cards to kind of see what type of um, things are coming up with the influence of this retrograde. And as you probably know, Mercury retrogrades make the world feel as if it's uh, the wires are crossed when it comes to communication, clear thinking, travel, and electronics glitches, and uh, there are a lot of misunderstandings in how we speak to each other. So let's take a step back and to restore and to relax and to maybe have some new perspectives or find some good advice to help us go with the flow. And I've kind of, I have a little spread that we'll look at and then I'll pull some Oracle cards and we'll see what is on tap for Pisces. Okay, so we have the Six of Wands. We have Death, the Major Arcana. We have the Four of Pentacles. So with the Six of Wands, there's a sense here of uh, that you're going to be successful, that here, this gentleman is riding in on his horse. He is holding his wand with a victory wreath, and the people here are watching. And so, whatever it may be that you have been working towards, putting in the daily effort, putting in the sacrifices, dealing with the adversity, you're, you are going to be successful. People are going to see that you are successful, that you're doing well, that you may be celebrated, and celebrations can take form in all different ways. Maybe it's simply a, uh, you know, a pat on the back. It's a nice greeting from an office mate, a congratulatory email. It could translate into a bonus or promotion or something as a result of your efforts. With the Six of Wands, there's a um, uh, suggestion here that this has involved leadership and it's really been the stewardship that you've shown in order to move forward to become successful to reach your goal and it's nice to be uh, celebrated or recognized for the effort that goes into this six of wands also as i as i look at this you know when people are successful others look to, toward those successful folks for inspiration and it's simply it can be a great motivating factor to watch someone else perhaps um, you know pass the bar exam or do whatever they need to do uh, for their life and it can inspire others to want to do the same and to put in the same type of effort so while you've been working and uh, getting things done and people notice here we have the death card and the death card is again he's just like <laughs> this guy on the horse here here comes death the skeleton on the horse riding in and death is a uh, it's a very effective message which is to uh, you, the things are going to end stages of life are going to end you're going to transition into new stages or phases or periods within your life and death there's often a beginning and an ending and here's an ending and what does an ending do it opens the door to a new experience it uh, toughens you up when things end it's how do we uh, react to those endings how do we move forward how do we absorb it how do we make it um, you know, a part of our fabric. So death has this, um, it's, the, it's just very clear because it's something has to be let go or you just have to let it end. You have to let it die. And from that, you're able to grow or develop or build something different and something new that is going to move you along in the cycle of life. You know, seasons change. The leaves on the trees, they die, then they 
uh, they become new again and beautifully green in the spring. So there's a sense here that uh, if we can just allow what happens naturally within the world to unfold and to put it in the right perspective, which is sometimes things you have to let them end. You have to uh, bury them, so to speak, so that you can move on and so that you can create the new part of your life so that you can allow it to unfold and to carry you through. So while there may be heavy, heavy feelings, heavy emotions, uh, difficult times, ultimately we learn and we grow when we see death because it helps us to evolve as people. So death brings a lot of, um, a lot of deep emotions and a lot of things when you're letting something go, you may be fighting it. You may not want to do that. And so when I see the four of pentacles here, there was a, there's a desire to keep things status quo. There's a desire to hold on. There's a desire here to, uh, hoping that nothing's going to change. Cause if you see by this illustration, the pentacle is weighing his head. It's on his head. He's holding it over his heart. He's got his feet planted on it. He is stationary. He is uh, set in, he's really set strong there, see, seated. And so with the Four of Pentacles, there's this sense of holding on to your resources, maybe holding on to your wits, holding on to the feelings perhaps that you had for whatever had to die here or to, to end. And it's just not ready to stand up and to step out and to be more open. It's kind of just being a little bit shut down. And often the Four of Pentacles has a connotation regarding money, being miserly or really watching your finances. And you know, people are legitimately having to watch their finances and to be frugal and to be thrifty. So that's a, it's probably a good strategy to be mindful, but you get a much more of a sense here of being closed down with this guy, of feeling unable and unwilling perhaps to open it up and to move out of this little boundary place that, that he's created. So when I look at this in total, it's a day where something has to end. You have to either do the work to accept it or put it into its proper place, uh, acknowledge it, figure out how you're going to move on and what's going to open up for you. You may feel a little closed down, a little unwilling to move, un unwilling to talk about it perhaps, or to share about it. Uh, it just may feel that you're not in, that you're not in a position or you're not ready to open up those arms and to let the world come at you that you just perhaps need some more time. With time, with the right mindset, with directing and focusing your energies on things that you want to do and there where you want to go. You know, the Six of Wands is a lovely reminder here that success uh, can still be yours even in times of letting things end and certainly maybe a consequence of, or a direct, uh, you know, relationship between something ending and then the success. So a very interesting reading for Saturday. Let's take a look at the numbers. Okay. So we have six and four is 10 and 10 and 13 is 23. And that reduces to five, and five is about new cycles. It can be about freedom. It can be about adjustments, challenges. Hmm. And then finally, let's take a look at an oracle card and get a little more information. Sorceress. You are a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. Well, uh, each person is responsible for what they believe, what they visualize, 
what they hope for in their heart, in their minds. And so to crystallize and to set that intention every day is certainly a component and an attribute for those who are successful. It's to really visualize and to uh, have it present every day of what, you, what it is that you want to do with your life. How are you gonna bring that happiness in? So you make the magic. Uh, and I think just the other little me message with making the magic is that sometimes it's messy. Sometimes life is messy. Things end and we get hurt and we cry and we get, or get angry or get frustrated. But there's always a new day and that you can always pick up the pace and start fresh. So I hope you found something helpful here today with this reading. If you did, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.